So I recently did a video of my favorite turn-based RPGs, my favorite action-based RPGs. So to top this triad of RPGs, in this video, I'm going to tackle my favorite strategic RPGs. Now, I love tactical RPGs. It's my thing. It is very fun and engaging as well. So let me take you on a ride to my personal favorite tactical RPGs. But before we start, if you like RPG content, then please hit that subscribe button if you're not yet subscribed and tell me what your favorite strategy RPGs are in the comments down below. Alrighty, on to numero uno, and that is Fire emblem three houses a classic now i could just say play this game and end it here but that's not my mo i like to go through all the details and tell you why you should pick up this game that's why my lists are just eight seven and maybe ten max anyways beside that tangent let's get back into three houses three houses is probably one of if not one of the best Fire Emblem games in the series, besides Fire Emblem Awakening. It is the quintessential strategy RPG you must have if you're a fan of the genre, mostly because it can have everything a fan could ask for. Now, if you're familiar with the Fire Emblem series, then you've probably played Three Houses, but if you're new, the Fire Emblem series kind of push the tactical RPG genre to new heights, especially with Awakening. A lot of casual players did start with Awakening. I mean, I did too. And Three Houses is no exception to that rule. It has everything you will love in a strategy RPG, and there's also difficulty options. For example, if you play it casually, your units don't die in battle. They kind of just retreat. But if you play a classic mode, your units die right there if you don't make the right move. Now, this is kind of contentious because the casual and the classic mode are highly debated to this day in the community, but I love that they have options. And not gonna lie, casual mode is what I play on most of the time. I've only played classic mode like once and I didn't enjoy it at all. And that's okay, that's why there's options. I love options in a game. But that's not it, because in Fire Emblem Three Houses, there is a great story to be discovered. So I'm going to keep the synopsis short and sweet. This game takes place on the continent of Fodlan, where it's divided by three ruling powers. You follow Byleth, a mercenary then turned teacher, to the prestigious Garrick Mock Monastery. You are given the option to teach one of the three houses. And like every school setting, drama ensues there's a lot of political intrigue. I love me some political intrigue in my games. Getting to know your units, especially in Three Houses, is really, really fun because they're really, really good characters. I mean, not all of them, but a majority of them are written really well and you really want to get to know them and it's just a fun time. But the meat of this fantastic game comes down to the gameplay. Boasting a very complex battle system with different kinds of weapons, magic, defense, and the like, you can customize characters classes, abilities, and weapons, allowing for diverse strategies and playstyles. Back to the options. I love options. Although it may seem difficult at first and there's a lot going on, the gameplay is easy to grasp. And while Fire Emblem Awakening is still my favorite, Three Houses is a close second. All right, so the next one I have to explain a bit. Number one, it's a repeat. I usually don't do repeats, but they're different games. And number two, I'm not a real fan of this game, but I do recommend it. And that is Fire Emblem Engage. Yeah, it was bad for me, but it might be good for somebody else. Fire Emblem Engage is actually an anniversary title and it's way smaller in scope. But why I put this on this list is mostly because the gameplay is freaking awesome. It is so, so good. They fine tuned it so, so well. And I will feel like a fraud to just dismiss this game just because the story was bad. The gameplay in this game is the best in the entire series, which is a crime given the story is so bad. The best parts in Fire Emblem Engage that makes the gameplay stand out is the break mechanic. So to put it simply, the break mechanic takes the weapon triangle to a whole new level, where if you encounter an enemy and you have a weapon that beats theirs, then you could break them and they're all open for attack. And then we have the rings. No, not Lord of the Rings, but the Fire Emblem equivalent to that. Now, the Emblem Rings is a special MacGuffin 
and Fire Emblem Engage. And while there is a story behind them, I'm not going to get into it because it makes no sense. So I'm just going to explain it gameplay wise. Each ring has its own character linked to it from past Fire Emblem games. But besides the huge fan service, these rings have awesome power ups when used. Plus, not to mention access to the hero's abilities. I will also say that the maps in Fire Emblem Engage are really, really good. Some have unique gimmicks to them, which makes it difficult, but in a good way. Now, even though I have my gripes with Fire Emblem Engage, I put it on this list because the game is really, really fun gameplay wise. The thing that knocks it down is mostly the dumb story. Needless to say, if you enjoy games, for their gameplay more than their story, then Fire Emblem Engage is good for you. See, not all games on this list have to be games I like. I like to give people different options. Now for the next one, a nice change of pace, and that is Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. Now, I put Kingdom Battle, but this could kind of go with Sparks of Hope, which is the sequel to Kingdom Battle. This game literally came out of nowhere. What boggles my mind is how did Ubisoft pitch this idea to Nintendo? And how did they get it approved? That's the big mystery. If you didn't know, the Rabbids were originally in Raymond games, and then they got their own spin-off and series. Now, the Rabbids are a big of a menace they're kind of like the minions from despicable me but that aside mario and rabbit's kingdom battle is actually really really good so behind all that weirdness is a good story well a good story not the best and some great gameplay in the tactics RPG genre. So good that some games like Persona 5 Tactica took that concept and made it their own. You control a combination of Mario characters like Peach, Luigi, and each person has a rabid counterpart like Rabbit Mario, Rabbit Peach, and Rabbit Luigi. The charming thing about this game is that the characters and the rabid counterparts have two totally different personalities. And I love how Rabbit Mario is just lazy and so out of it, whereas Mario is just into it and wants to save the day. I really like that. It gives you a glimpse of the characters if they were done differently. <laughs> and it's just very very cute. Now this game is a bit different because the characters roam around in a creative and vibrant world which is very fun to explore as you encounter various enemies. So there's a bunch of crazy stuff in the outer world. Some of them are really really funny and then when you encounter an enemy you transition into the strategy RPG gameplay. The party moves into a grid at least in the first game because in the second game the grid style was removed for a more range of movement kind of style. Now each character has a unique weapon to them and every character in your party has a unique set of abilities that you want to look out before going into battle. Like Rabbit Peach is practically essential because she's the main healer and as you defeat each enemy you get certain points which you can allocate to unlock certain abilities like being able to jump farther. It is really fun in my opinion and it took me by surprise how much I ended up loving the game. So a good lesson to know is don't judge a book by its cover or a game by its cover. Actually, games are pretty expensive, so I don't blame anybody for judging a game by its cover. But I will say that Mario and Rabbids, both 1 and 2, go on sale often and you can find them very, very cheap. Next on this list is basically if Fire Emblem was in modern settings, and that is Valkyria Chronicles. Valkyria Chronicles is a unique take on the strategy RPG genre. Now, before I move on talking about the game, let me just quickly talk directly to Sega. Why haven't you released Valkyria Chronicles 2 and 3 to the States? There's a Valkyria Chronicles 4 and Valkyria Chronicles, which is the first one, but what happened to 2 and 3? Where'd they go? Like one of my pet peeves is having a series that's legit missing the middle of it and just has like the first and the last. I don't get it. But hey, maybe Sega needs some money down the line and they'll port them. Who knows? Alrighty, now back to Valkyria Chronicles. Valkyria Chronicles is a tactical role-playing game that combines elements of turn-based strategies, third-person shooter, and role-playing genres. Just like every other game in this list, really. I don't know why I got so technical with Valkyria Chronicles. What makes this game unique to Fire Emblems and the other ones is that this one takes a more modern approach. So instead of lances, people use snipers, and instead of swords, people use guns, all that stuff. I mean, there is some magic, but that ties into the story, which I can't really say because of spoilers. Battles take place in an open battlefield where you could control individual units. This being set in a fake modern S war really emphasizes the vulnerability of each unit. If a unit falls, you have to get a medic, and if the medic can't save them in time, they die, which is really 
really sad, but that's the reality of the world that they live in. Now, as you move on, there will be this overarching line, and that basically tells you if they're out in the open, if they could shoot somebody, etc, etc. So I love this game because it really emphasizes what units you should put in the dangers of it. Always have a medic on standby and don't put your units in danger. And also there's the element of tanks. You can actually use tanks and they do a lot of damage, but your enemy can use tanks and they're really hard to destroy. So again, keep that in mind. Now the story on the other hand, it's very enjoyable. It does give you a look at the politics of this world. It not only gets you to empathize with your party, but it also takes a look at the opposing party so you can feel a little bit more empathy for them. And I really like that because everyone is just people. No one's magical, no one's anything. Everybody is just trying to fight for what they feel is the right thing to do. Oh, and plus the Valkyria part. Not really interested in that story plot, but it is there. The first Valkyria Chronicles is on the eShop. It's not that expensive. And Valkyria Chronicles 4 is also very, very good. So I highly recommend Valkyria Chronicles. It is a treat. Now, next on this list is another modern-esque tactical RPG, and that is Advanced Wars Reboot Camp. Now, Advanced Wars Reboot Camp is another take on a more modern-style tactical RPG game. Admittedly, I love Valkyria Chronicles more, but this one does warrant some merit and it's actually really good. Now this is basically a remake of the first two Advanced Wars on the GBA. It's not your typical strategy RPG game where your singular characters are on the field. Instead, you use troops, tanks, choppers, and fighter planes to do the fighting for you. And your goal is to capture as much territories or cities. Also, raise enough funds to fund the creation of more troops and more things to aid you in the battle. And fun fact, the GBA version of the game was developed by Intelligence Systems. So the remake was handled by WayForward. Now Advanced Wars Reboot Camp does have a very poor story. Some people might think that's a good time because you don't have to do all the talking, but I think it's a bad thing because getting to know your units is part of the experience of the tactical RPG formula, but Advanced Wars Reboot Camp does offer a very solid gameplay experience. It's on the harder side. I wouldn't recommend it for newcomers. But overall, I do like Advanced Wars Reboot Camp and I hope to get back into it soon. Now, the next game, remember what I said in Fire Emblem Engage that I could put games on this list that I necessarily don't like? This one is another one of those. And the game is Triangle Strategy. Now, the story is the biggest gripe I had and it made the whole experience for me pretty disappointing. Though, it does not mean it's a bad game. It's actually a good game and I've heard a lot of people really liked it even the story, which I don't even understand why. But I can at least appreciate the high level of strategy in this game. And it plays a lot like Final Fantasy Tactics. Triangle Strategy wants to go for an olden strategy game feel for modern consoles. Credit to Team Asado for making this game. And yes, this game boasts the beautiful HD 2D art style. As usual, you take turns moving characters from their party to the grid in the battlefield. The order that the characters go through is dependent on the speed stat, and you can actually see a timeline on whose turn is who, so you can better plan out your strategic moves. Now, the one thing I really didn't like about the gameplay is that the characters are static to the class that they're in. So unlike Fire Emblem, where you could change characters' classes, in Triangle Strategy, you can't. So a mage will still be a mage, a sword fighter is still a sword fighter, etc. So as you progress through the game, you could upgrade each class, giving them further abilities and making them stronger. Another thing about this game is the scales, the scales of conviction, which basically has your party members vote for something and depending how you vote is how you get the different routes. Yes, this game has different routes. Now, if they do make a sequel of this game, I would recommend only having one route instead of four that's half-baked, but that's just my opinion. But anyways, the strategy RPG mechanic itself is really, really fun, though I wish the story was better. Like, oh my god, I was so disappointed. Needless to say, this is a very welcomed inclusion into the strategy RPG genre. Well, the next game on this list takes it another step. And the game is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Now this game is really built differently. The story and the gameplay are like separate. They're even separate on the menu. You could tackle the story first and then the gameplay, 
or vice versa. The story is fantastic. It will keep you wanting more, but the story is only half of it. There is the gameplay to talk about. Now the gameplay portion is where the kaiju battles take place as the characters face an alien invasion. Your goal is to defend the terminals, which houses the key to stopping the invasion. Each battle is separated by stages, and out of all the 13 characters, you can only select 6 to fight in the battle. Each character has a different type of sentinel generation. Like one can be more melee, the others can be focused on long range attacks, though it does emphasize mixing up your units because each unit has a battery, so they can't be in one battle after another after another. They have to have a cooldown time before going back into battle. Now, this game takes a more different perspective than the grid style. It's mostly like a top-down version of it where you can see the whole battlefield and you can see where to put your units. Now, depending on the units and their power-ups, they could walk farther or longer. And depending on the sentinels, they could do a wide range of abilities. Now, there's a lot of mechanics baked into this game, and I won't fault you for being confused. I was confused when I first played it. I was just like, what is going on? So I would recommend this game for anyone who likes some sci-fi story plot with some good strategy RPG gameplay mechanics. So that is the end of today's video. If you enjoyed, then please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. I would appreciate that, especially if you like RPG content. And tell me in the comments down below what are your favorite tactical RPGs. I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of the day, and as always, play a good game. Peace, peace. Chill. In. <laughs> Relax.